From Silicon Slopes, I'm your host, Josh Matches, and I'm joined by Julie Wainwright, the founder and CEO of The Real Real. Thank you so much for joining us, Julie. Oh, it's a pleasure. So talk to us about The Real Real and what you guys do. Well, we are authenticated luxury consignment. For the consigner, we go to your house, we remove things from uh, fashion, fine jewelry, watches, home, art, collectibles. Now we're doing sports equipment and collectibles. We then authenticate everything for the consumer. We pick, pack, and ship and ship it out. So we are full service, high-end luxury consignment. And I know I love to buy everything that I wear on all of my shows in The Real Real, and it literally saves my life every time, so I'm like such a crazy fan. But in addition to being a crazy fan, I hear that you are doing some really incredible work in terms of sustainability, not just in terms of the circular economy that you've created with your business, but really thinking on Capitol Hill in terms of the impact that you can make in pushing that forward. So oh, could you talk to us wow. a little bit about that? I'm so glad you heard about that because we feel like we've been silent too long. I mean, the fashion industry is either the second or largest polluter in the world, and it's sort of an unknown thing. So our first thing is to draw awareness to what's happening every second. Landfills getting a truckload of unused goods, fabrics that don't break down. There's, you know, 50 or 60 percent of everything produced ends up in a landfill or burnt, worse yet. So we are bringing awareness to that at Capitol Hill, with the goal of getting some consumer incentive to encourage the circular economy, because new studies have come out and said if only one in five goods is recirculated it will decrease the planet by 1.5 degrees. So if we can encourage the circular economy while supply, supply chains are being reinvented, we have a chance of making a real impact and we're working hard on it. But I think the first thing is no one talks about it in the US. They're talking about it in the EU. There's laws coming out, but the US is a little far behind their awareness. There's such a knowledge gap in the American public. I don't think they realize that this fast fashion industry is such a large polluter. As we all talk about these other ways that we can save our planet, not thinking about fashion as being this large contributor to global warming. I have never seen it in print, and I think it really doesn't work for the fashion industry to talk about it, yeah. but lawmakers in Europe are talking about it, lawmakers in the UK are talking about it, and the US needs to become part of the climate solution, otherwise we're gonna be the dumping ground, because you know what will happen, if they can't dump or burn in Europe, they're gonna do it here. And we don't want it happening anywhere. We want laws that restrict that harder supply chain maintenance and fashion desire over it. But let's just get started with encouraging people to recirculate goods. That's a fast win and it's a real business. So it also creates jobs. It's a fantastic business. So speaking of the business, the pandemic certainly I'm sure was hard in the beginning, but the acceleration of digital online shopping has been tremendous. How have you been able to keep up with demand in terms of both buying and selling? So it hit us a little harder than most people because we're not peer-to-peer. -peer. Key differentiation, we come to your home. We couldn't go to people's homes. But that was then and now. We're actually, um, every region is back. Things are going gangbusters versus 2019. We're up between 45 and 47% versus year ago. And uh, versus 2020, we're really up. I mean, we're growing over 50%. So we're back. The business is stronger than ever. We've moved. Re in fact, we doubled down during COVID. We said, look, we're going to reinvest in our development team so we can automate our, our ops centers faster. We're going to move our ops centers sooner than we thought. And we're going to open neighborhood stores. So instead of like cutting back and paring back, we doubled down to position ourselves for growth. And it's work, it's really exciting. So we're back, I'm, everyone's aware there's a Delta variant, it is not affecting us. Uh, we have a little PTSD, a little caution that we always put in our press releases because it was a tough time for a lot of people. But yeah, we're back, that was then, and we re-emerged stronger and the growth is coming. Amazing. Well, I know you have to get going to your main stage talk here at Silicon Slopes. What are you gonna be talking about? 
Well, some of what you and I just talked about. We're going to talk about making sure that we have a sustainable future with fashion, talking about how we navigated COVID, where we are. And then uh, Chip has an unusual perspective because he was one of our investors. Chip, board He's member. our board member, and he's still on our board. Um, so he's going to talk about why he invested and what's changed and where we are. Amazing. Julie, thank you so much for joining us here at the NASDAQ studio at Silicon Slopes, and we look forward to seeing your talk. And you know we love NASDAQ. So any entrepreneur thinking of choosing, go NASDAQ, because that you will be absolutely, especially if you're in tech, that's the only way to go. Oh, what a wonderful testimony. Thank you. Thank you.